Hello and welcome. Um, I've got my cute little assistant here today. Uh, welcome to Joy of Stationery. I'm Jennifer. And what I have for you for this video is an update on how my <laughs> my one my one pouch August is is going. So basically what I began the month with and how those systems are going for me. I always find that by the time that I reach the middle of the month, I am itching for some kind of change. And most easily, I think that can be done with say a kind of cover change. Um, sometimes it also means a little bit of a change or a shift in how I'm planning or how I'm journaling. Um, and so on and so forth. Uh, but nonetheless, I do find that the middle of the month is often a good time to kind of reevaluate and sort of see what's working for me for the month, um, see what's not, and kind of get a grasp on, again, um, how to fine tune the system overall, I suppose. So I began the month uh, with this idea of a kind of one pouch August. And as I mentioned in my video uh, at the beginning of the month, it really was an attempt to rein in my enthusiasm <laughs> about, you know, going back to a number of different notebooks and techos um, and journals, you know, after One Book July. And so in the same way that One Book July was actually super helpful in getting me to streamline and really kind of think about, well, what are the, what's the most essential at this moment? How can I sort of slim down into kind of a one book, um, really kind of a one, one cover um, system uh, and not feel that I'm spread too thin across different notebooks? Um, in the same way, you know, even though I was excited to go back to some other notebooks and techos, this one pouch idea was a way to, you know, try to try to um, try to still put some constraints <laughs> on my enthusiasm. And so this idea that okay, I will be um, going back to bringing other techos, other notebooks back into my system, but as long as they kind of stay within the confines of, or, you know, I can fit them all in this one pouch. There have been um, a couple of changes, um, not some, not anything terribly drastic um, at the moment, but, um, some things I think I've maybe taken out, other things I've added, and it is it is always just so funny to me how easy it is to add some things. And so I do find that, um, particularly when I start evaluating mid-month, um, it is striking to me how much fine-tuning our planning and journaling systems are kind of about you know, having the grace for ourselves in both kind of expanding and contracting our systems because I think there's some flexibility there depending on what we need and the way that that's constantly kind of developing and growing, um, you know, alongside the sort of desire to commit to certain kinds of things. And so um, just all that to say that you know, some things I think kind of came out of this because I realized that maybe those were notebooks or kind of systems for later on, um, you know, beyond August, for example, when the semester begins. And other things kind of came in or were kind of switched out a little bit. And so I'll, I'll speak a little bit um, to that. At the moment, um, you do see that I have this one, uh, this, again, this beautiful Sumi, uh, pouch. Sumi is the name of the colorway. This is the Baumkuchen and the Superior Labor collaboration um, large engineer pouch with the pockets. And I still have things that are outside of that. <laughs> um, 
and maybe I'll speak to that first. So this over here is the new <laughs> little um, card holder wallet that I made, again using Republic of Yarnia's pattern and this really cool um, black with rainbow uh, specs yarn. And, um, and then I also, you know, attached a um, really, really cute ghost pouch here. And this is from an Etsy seller. And I just think this is the cutest patch, ghost patch that I've seen. Um, and I think that I was just, you know, um, I wanted to sort of try a thicker yarn for the card holder. Uh, but, you know, it's the same sort of design. Um, I've got some cards in here on one side. Uh, the ones that go on the other side I have in here for the moment, and I'll speak to that as well. But again, making this cute little crochet card holder has been really great just um, to be on the go and have something so small that I can just kind of, you know, slip into a pocket. Um, and just quickly open, get the cards that I need if I'm going to the grocery store or something like that, and I don't want to be weighed down um, too much. So this has been um, a really cute little go-to and, and perhaps getting ready for fall a little bit. And it'll stay there. <laughs> um, so this is my Paper Mood pen case that I have done a mini review of and you have um, some of you might have seen on previous videos and the other day uh, I was feeling the urge to kind of bring this along to a cafe um, uh, and house perhaps you know a little bit of a wallet setup just meaning a, a couple of um, the essential cards that I needed as well as um, you know, some pocket-sized or smaller notebooks, and that way I could just do, um, you know, a little bit of note-taking, a little bit of journaling during a brunch at a cafe, for example, and it also just gave me an excuse to, you know, bring bring this really lovely pen case around, and, and I really liked that. Um, this uh, back pocket here was also really great in terms of being able to kind of slip um, my phone in, which I think is how they've advertised it as well. Uh, but, you know, just to kind of show you, um, and it's, this does mean that I had to kind of move some things around and adapt this more for kind of bringing it with me rather than what it was sort of storing before, um, which was the Canon Mini printer. Um, but again, it's like super, super simple. Oops, let me see if I can. <laughs> um, it's super simple. Uh, I love that the pocket actually has room. Um, or, you know, fits a field notes perfectly. So I've kind of tucked that on in here. Um, there's space for the cards that I need right in the front here. And then again, I do have the three pen slots in the back. So I just have one there, um, one of the Uniball uh, 1P gel pens, just to kind of use for, for the full setup. And here I also just have, um, you know, again, really simply uh, two little kind of packets of Kita washi tapes. I really like these two. I think they have some really kind of beautiful flor uh, floral designs here in kind of a nice sort of vintage colorway. So I have those there um, in case I just want like a quick little decorating <laughs> uh, session or a little need to decorate. And then this um, B7 Penco notebook had been housed in the Passport TN cover um, and I decided to take it out because I felt like um, it was I guess I just I was getting a little bit concerned about sort of the spine and, and how thick it was um, just giving it a little bit, bit of a rest from that but it makes it super kind of easy to take on the go and you know I can slip it in here very easily and um, and, you know, with this, I kind of have, you know, just some quick essentials. Um, you know, if I want to go for a quick little cafe trip or something. And, you know, I've been, this one I've been using, the field notes I've been using for some, some journaling. Um, but I do have some notes in there as well. And the Penco, because I was using it in the Passport TN and it was so portable, um, I'd really been using it to just kind of 
keep some notes, but also kind of use as a little bit of a cafe, uh, cafe notebook, cafe reference, or other kinds of eatery references. And so, for example, my partner and I will, um, you know, kind of add an entry on a particular cafe or restaurant that we're at, and we'll, you know, write some things about the food and the atmosphere and the drinks and, you know, what we sort of thought of them. So it's a nice kind of record that's easy to take on the go. Um, Hello again. So this has changed a little bit since I filmed the first part of this video <laughs> um, in that some of the items in here were a little bit in flux still and I was still adding a little bit to them or kind of altering them a little bit. But I suppose as of this particular moment in mid-August, this is sort of what we've got here. And something that I started alluding to in the first part is this idea that, um, at least for me, I find that in terms of fine-tuning my system, there are periods or times when I sort of expand <laughs> and then when I contract in terms of the kind of number of different techos and planners that I gravitate towards that I think will be helpful in terms of my planning. Um, sorry for the noise, that's, that's my little kitty coming over. Hang on, do you want to join? <laughs> um, so in any case, uh, so what I have here then is, once again, the large engineer pouch from Baumkuchen and the superior labor that I'm using as my one pouch August. And I've made a few changes. Um, as you can see, I've put, a <laughs> I have put um, the colored pens, uh, the Zebra Sarasa vintage pens in the pockets. Um, instead, I can still fit, you know, slim notebooks like a field notes in there, but uh, because I had taken them out of the paper mood pen case um, to try to use it as a kind of a travel um, setup, I've put them in here instead so that because this sits on my desk, I can have kind of easy access to the different colors. So I might begin with um, one quick addition to this. This is something that I actually had in my lineup and I had forgotten to mention it even from the very beginning. <laughs> and this is the really beautiful Aurora Duty um, English Weeks that I know was really popular from the 2023 release. And I, I do just think that this illustration is so darling. Um, this is again Hiroko Kubota, one of their illustrations. And um, I don't think I realized just quite how glossy it was going to be, but um, still really lovely. And what I had started doing was using this as a kind of memory keeping book. And let me see if I can just sort of, um, it's not particularly particularly aesthetic right now. It's just a little, um, you know, keeping photos in here for now, but it's some, it's just a practice that I want to do. So photos from each week and including some of them in here so that by the end of the year, we would have a little memory book, especially now that we've got um, our little feline companion here. So that was one that I'd forgotten forgotten to show you. And, and it was mostly because it was kind of every so often that I would come to this and try to backfill um, with photos just because I wasn't necessarily, didn't necessarily have the time to, to kind of print out photos very often. But this is something that I recently returned to and I backfilled like three <laughs> three weeks worth of um, of, of photos, you know, not 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 um, not a huge amount of photos for each spread, but you know, just kind of enough to um, to kind of mostly fill the page. So 
So this really constitutes my main lineup um, as it stands in the middle of August now. And the ones that are contained in here currently are ones that I did speak to at the beginning of the month, if perhaps altered slightly for some of them. Um, so, uh, though I haven't necessarily been using it super often, I do remember kind of mentioning that I wanted to bring this back in. This is the Take a Note A6 or Mini Planner, um, and just to kind of show you what that kind of looks like. Um, and it had gone by the wayside earlier in the year because I had started using it as a kind of hobbies tracker. Um, and unfortunately, with things getting really, really busy and overwhelming in terms of work commitments and responsibilities, uh, I sort of fell off of my, my hobbies. So now, or at least in August, I wanted to make a concerted effort to spend some time with my hobbies and um, try to do more of the things that I love. And um, one of those things also included beginning to film some of these videos as um, a kind of hobby uh, that was part of my love of stationery. And so this quickly became in July um, something that I could use to plan out some film ideas, filming ideas, but also to kind of track and sort of schedule, you know, when I'd like to, um, or when I have kind of published a particular video. So this is still around. It's not something I necessarily reach for on a daily basis, but it's there and certainly a few times a week I'll you know, grab this if I have some ideas um, or if I have some notes that I want to take down about a potential um, video or the filming of something, this will be what I go to as well as kind of keeping a log of a game that I really love to play. This one, you'll remember, is the uh, Beautiful Count the Lights cover and this is housing my Hobonichi um, Avec in here. Uh, I've continued to use it as a way to kind of keep um, a daily gratitude ritual and this has been helpful in terms of even just getting the day started or wrapping up the day. What I've been using are the, um, I believe it's the Moxie Life prompts for daily gratitude. And so there are three for the morning. I believe there are three for the evening. And so the morning ones include prompts like, you know, today is mantra, I am feeling, my needs today are. And so it's a really helpful way to begin the day and, you know, begin the day by thinking about, you know, uh, a mantra could be like an intention of some sort or just kind of a reminder for myself. And um, how I'm feeling, you know, it's good to just kind of have that moment in the morning to kind of reflect on how it is that I'm feeling, as well as to reflect on, you know, what are going to be my needs today and, and already having that in mind before I've actually begun the tasks for the day. Um, and the evening kind of wrap up um, similarly is, uh, is really nice for reflection and again for gratitude. I think the very first one, um, you know, you can kind of list, I think on the moxie, worksheet was maybe four of these, but um, with the prompt today, uh, I was grateful for the following um, and the highlight of the day as well as how you can make tomorrow better. So I've been keeping that actually in the Hobonichi Avec in the dailies just because I feel like that's been um, really good to kind of develop that kind of practice of reaching for these tetchos, right, and kind of reaching for these pages and um, you know, getting to, getting to develop a better sense of what my rhythms are, what my needs are, and what I'm grateful for. And I've also been using this as a kind of celebration journal. Um, and this is even just for the small wins, just little things, um, just to be able to kind of record, you know, hey, I, I did that today. Um, even if it's something that might seem small to other people, it might be something that um, is really big for you and how you are doing. 
So this has been just a really nice way to kind of keep track of that. Um, once again, uh, you know, in celebration of Hobonichi season, I've been um, putting it in this, uh, in this particular cover. And because I've been really excited about Hobonichi season, um, I also decided to put the other um, roughly A6 sized planner that I was using, which is the Life and Pieces six month undated planner um, in the Ukrainian flowers cover. And this was something that I discovered that I got really excited about, um, even though I think in an earlier video I had noted that this um, this particular Life in Pieces planner, which again was a little bit of a wild card in my lineup, um, was, you know, very close to the A6 size, but it was, I think, a little bit sort of slimmer this way and, a, and just a smidge longer kind of in terms of the height. But because these Hobonichi covers are, you know, quite generous in terms of the room that they provide. Um, I was really excited and really happy to find that this actually fits really perfectly in it. Um, so I loved that. I've been able to carry this around um, if I need it for an appointment or something. And this planner, again, as I've mentioned before, I've been pairing it with the Hobonichi Avec. Um, if the Hobonichi Avec has been a place for me to kind of record gratitude and reflections on a daily basis, um, this planner uh, has been the companion to give me room on the daily pages for a daily task list. Um, so that's how I've been using this particular planner. I do have a mini kind of review of this planner that I filmed earlier um, that uh, I, I may post for anybody who might be interested. So this um, has been really lovely, but because I have it in a separate cover now, uh, it does, you know, add a little bit of bulk in terms of trying to fit it into um, into this uh, this particular pouch. But it does all still fit. So there we go. Um, and then the last two, uh, one of them is the one that I had. Um, started. I've done, you know, one episode so far of what I'm calling Finding the Poetry. This is the Kunisawa notebook, which um, again is, is a really, really nice notebook. And what I decided to sort of use it for is um, to sort of collect the findings that I come across in my um, everyday life. So, you know, um, a little bit longer form, beautiful quotes, uh, and sort of passages that I come across. And so this will be just a way to kind of document those and to have them all together, you know, um, a collection of beautiful findings all gathered together in one notebook. And that's just an idea that really appeals to me. Um, and so because of that, this is also not something that I reach for on an everyday basis, but I have it here because you never know when you might come across um, something really beautiful that you'd like to record, right, or, or to kind of document. And so it's always here at the ready for um, the next, you know, the next beautiful quotation to come my way. And finally, um, I was able at last to <laughs> fit this tome um, in here. And that's because of a number of changes I've made. It's, it's actually, you know, this has actually been changing, you know, almost every day <laughs> as I've been trying to develop it. So this is my standard traveler's notebook. Um, and this was customized through the Baumkuchen Truly Yours service, which is just wonderful. Um, and again, this was done as a gift from my partner. And I had been wanting ways to, you know, make more use out of this. And I began to think, um, especially kind of at the beginning of the month and then kind of in the later part of the previous month, about turning this into a kind of 
um, in some ways, maybe like an all-in-one writing and research companion. I think I had also called it sort of a writing research kit or a writing research assistant, but it is kind of more of like a companion um, that I can go to for my writing. So it has even changed um, from yesterday. So again, it is something that is uh, very much still in progress, a work in progress, um, but perhaps it always will be depending on my needs and how they change and what I find ends up working for me. But let me just show you what I have so far and maybe some ways that it's changed a little bit, I think, since I first kind of introduced this. Um, I did change out the elastic um, and this was mostly because it was starting to get um, quite chunky. <laughs> um, and so to have the uh, beautiful Nanala design leather concho on it um, was a real delight to have, but it, it kind of added to the bulk. And I think just for the purposes um, for this month, for fitting it in here with the others, I just kind of um, wanted to use a simple elastic just to, just to slim it down a little bit. So literally as of yesterday, what I have done actually is I have included a Hobonichi Weeks. So this was, or this is, um, the uh, Hobonichi Weeks um, called Monogle, uh, which translates to my uncle in French. And it was one that I had originally purchased, you know, um, at the end of last year in order to use for research and writing. It was going to be sort of my research planner or research notebook. And I had gone back to it here and there, um, but it hadn't really stuck. You know, there would be some weeks that I would start using it in a particular way and feel like I was testing out a system, but you know, again, ultimately that wouldn't quite stick. Um, so more recently I had started um, Another kind of experiment that I think has, um, will have some traction for me, and we'll see, uh, that's, that's, um, that is my hope. But because of that, I decided to kind of incorporate that into this standard TN system. I know that others have brought in a Hobonichi Weeks to kind of keep in um, a standard traveler's notebook um, before, I think. Um, what I decided to do is kind of keep it in or put on a, um, a clear cover on cover. And then I realized that the smaller string that I, I don't think I've ever actually really used just because for the um, standard sized inserts for whatever traveler's notebook that you're using, um, it tends to stretch that out. And, and I get a little bit concerned about, you know, whether that's going to um, you know, kind of mess with the integrity of, of the, um, the materials of a standard insert. But I didn't realize until yesterday that this, you know, almost perfectly fits the size of the Hobonichi Week, so I can use that shorter string that otherwise I never use um, and just kind of, you know, use that to kind of attach this Hobonichi Weeks uh, with this, this clear cover on cover. And so, you know, that allows for, um, you know, being able to kind of have this. And, um, and it, it does still present a really clean look when I open the notebook, which is really helpful for me. But, you know, it's there. I, um, I've used uh, this little tab that, that comes on the clear cover on cover um, as a little bookmark so that I can just immediately kind of open to uh, the month that we're on and kind of have that um, have that on there. Um, this is something that I'm still sort of working on because I've only just gone back to this to, to kind of figure out what I might do with it. Um, but I'm really sort of happy about, uh, about doing that. Um, just maybe as a very quick um, note, this is kind of what I'm thinking, and I might, you know, again, I'll do a, a more detailed version of this at a later point, but what I thought this might be really helpful for is a method called day theming. So kind of theming the day on a particular um, type of 
task or potentially kind of category of life or work. Um, and so I, you know, tried this for like, you know, sort of two weeks. Um, I've gone kind of in between planners and trying that out, but I do think that this might be a really good way to kind of keep track of what I wanted to all along, which is my research and writing progress. And, you know, it's, it's right at the front here. Um, so, you know, I can sort of have that there. Um, I then have the craft folder, and this is because with the addition of the weeks, um, I felt like I needed to slim the other contents down a little bit. And having the, what I had before was a Galen leather, um, lovely black leather sort of wallet insert slash Hobonichi weeks um, cover. But I felt that it was, um, it wasn't, the standard tea in itself wasn't quite big enough to kind of encompass all of that. So I've, you know, migrated to a, um, just this craft folder that I had used before. And um, I now am using uh, these, the new accordion insert. Um, I, I would just being a little bit silly <laughs> with that. But the reason for that is, and this is something that really excites me, <laughs> um, is I had wanted to have some way that I could have inserts that within the insert itself, it could still be somewhat modular because um, I wanted to use different memo cards that had information on it that um, serves as reference, but I might wanna change the order of things or you know, have certain ones, um, certain uh, kinds of notes be at the forefront of a particular day's writing, what have you. So this was sort of my solution, um, which is to have that sort of modular ability in that I could kind of present, I'm just using these cute little paper clips for now. Um, but you know, these are notes from a series of lessons and modules, um, particular to a project that I'm working on. And so I can have them in order here, uh, but I can also sort of change them around based on where I need them to be. Um, this is sort of an important card for uh, my biggest project. And so that's kind of at the front when I open this up. Um, I have the next lesson, you know, starting here. Um, and this I'm using as a little bit of a dashboard. So I just kind of quickly made these little sort of um, kind of envelope or pockets really, I guess, um, just using some memo pad sheets. Uh, but, you know, it's, um, it's the perfect size for the you know, um, putting in kind of an A7 sized card. So, you know, here's one of the ones um, uh, by Megan Rhiannon. And then of course, also, these are the Folietto A7 note cards that I've been finding really helpful for my research and my writing. Um, and so depending on, uh, you know, I've, I put the, the sticker this month, this one's also from Megan Rhiannon on here so that I can very easily, you know, um, put in the folietto cards or note cards um, that are pertinent to maybe uh, specific projects for the month that I want to prioritize um, or really just anything. And so I have that again, kind of skips right in the beginning here, both of these. Um, and then this is uh, a really beautiful postcard um, by, Milk Tea Danny um, that I had actually gotten maybe sometime last year um, and you know before I'd moved back when I had um, a little laminator I had laminated this and I recently I hadn't been using it and so I found it again and I just thought it was sort of perfect again it's just kind of like a dashboard but you know it's it's this really lovely and whimsical workstation um, and that's kind of what I want to evoke, I guess, for, <laughs> for this as um, a part of a workstation that, 
brings me joy um, and that also makes me feel both creative and productive. So this was really exciting to me. Um, and again, it really is just about, uh, you know, an insert that I felt could give me um, the room to sort of play around with page order, um, note card order. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out how to kind of decorate the cover um, in, you know, in a way that's, you know, kind of whimsical, but, you know, can also be um, sort of accurate to uh, the contents of this and, and to kind of keep track of what it is that this holds. Uh, but yeah, this, this was just a really exciting development. And so um, something that I'm using at the moment, and this has, uh, this is the craft folder that, that kind of closes it up. And I have the um, pencil board from the 2023 Travelers Company lineup in here as well for when I need um, that surface. Uh, following this, I don't have any documents in this right now, but this is actually the um, the document holder insert. Um, I'm not recalling if that's the official name of it, so I'll look it up and put it in the description. But basically, this um, in this particular insert, you can take a four documents and fold them into thirds and be able to kind of keep them here. And so as I'm working on different kinds of projects and different kinds of um, assignments, you know, I can kind of store paper versions, that A4 versions of um, any of the kind of documents or materials that I might need here. Um, and I'll have that all together when I'm on the go and have this, this with me. Um, at the moment, it's just kind of housing um, another beautiful postcard. This time, this is from um, Eureka Art Studio. And I, I really love her art as well. And again, this is sort of a lovely little kind of studying <laughs> station that's also really whimsical. And so this one and the um, the Milk Tea Danny one, uh, you know, I figure depending on how I'm feeling, I can kind of switch it out um, as, you know, as potential dashboard possibilities. So I'm just keeping that there um, for now. And then finally, this is the, um, the kind of slim Yamamoto paper notebook with the kind of waxed paper cover, which I which I really enjoy, um, that I was thinking of using just for, you know, quick um, work-related or project-related notes and, uh, and just to kind of have a notebook handy. And so this I've decided to just kind of insert um, in the back, since I do have this secretary pocket here. Uh, that makes it a lot easier to just kind of um, take out and put back in, uh, depending on, um, you know, if I need to take some notes really quickly uh, without it having to necessarily be confined to the strings and kind of attached to the notebook proper. Um, and so I feel like it all fits really, really well. Um, it is, you know, as you can see, it is a little bit um, a little bit chonky, uh, but um, because of, I think, just the nature of the different inserts that I've used, uh, there isn't actually any overhang, so so that's kind of nice. Um, but in any case, so this is what this is currently housing. Um, again, this is a, a work in progress, but something that's been kind of fun to put together as I also you know, work on my various projects and think about what would be the most conducive to me doing my best work. And I'm just going to see if I can fit these all back in. So there we go. Um, so that is my status update for mid-month for the middle of August. So I hope that you enjoyed this. Um, I hope that you're continuing to enjoy Hobonichi season, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.